My name is Laura, um, as most of you know, and um, I just kind of want to share my story of what the Lord has done in my life, actually. And um, he diagnosed me the first time 14 years ago with stage 2 breast cancer. And I was like absolutely shocked when I found out. I was like, cancer? What? You know, it was just like, wow, okay. So I had a mastectomy and a double, and I had five months of chemo, lost my hair. And um, I went in to do some reconstructive surgery, and they found some microscopic cells. So then I, I went through radiation for about three months every single day. And during that time, I had met a friend that lived around the corner, and she had had stage four cancer in her bones and her liver. And so she started ministering to me every day and um, told me how to um, just believe that I'm healed. And so um, I just kind of like after I was diagnosed, all that went and I was done, I really honestly, honestly believed that cancer was gone. I just, I knew. I was like, it's gone. It's never coming back. And then, um, so through that, you know, I went on SSI and disability because I would work two jobs. They wouldn't give me the hours to give me insurance, and I knew that I needed insurance. So um, I went on permanent disability, and my little boy was five years old. And so he and I had a, had our little journey, you know, him worrying about losing his mommy, and um, and that was pretty hard. And uh, so. My little Joey, who is now 20, um, <laughs> was a real challenge, a real challenge. Every single day of my life, every day, on the way to school, it was something. The principal calling, Joey said this, Joey did that. It was hard. And every day I pray, Lord, I know you're going to give him your mind and make him like you, and it's hard. I'm like, okay. And so I just went on believing that God was going to change him and everything was going to be okay. <laughs> So then, God, I think I uh, lost track of all my little notes here. <laughs> I'm getting off track. Um, so anyway, we went through that, and I went through some very, very difficult things with my Joey that is probably the hardest thing for any mom to go through next to death. I had to go through that, and it was, and I had to just trust in the Lord that this happened for a reason. And um, it's going to be okay. So then, um, let's see. So then three and a half years ago, um, I was going to UCLA, and I was getting checked routinely. And um, I started to have a lot of back pain, a lot of pain. So I went to my primary care doctor. He gave me an injection of steroids. Didn't help. Four days later, went back. He gave me another one. Didn't help. He said, that's it. You're not going back to UCLA. So he sent me to a wonderful doctor at Presbyterian, and um, he said, you're going straight over and having a CT, and we're doing blood work. And then the next day they called me, and they said, you know, you, you have cancer. And um, they did a bone scan and said that I'm covered from skull, my skull to my toes with bone cancer and in all of my lymph <coughs> nodes, and it was just ready to take off like a forest fire. So <clears throat> that's when he said, let's start on chemo. He says, I have a series of treatments to try to keep you alive for as long as we can. And um, so then we started, and now I'm on my sixth treatment. And uh, I'm on radiation because my skull is just like huge lumps just coming out. But it's all good because they're coming, going out and not in. <laughs> so, <laughs> so right now I'm getting radiation. And I'll finish it this week and next week, and then I'll start on a new treatment. I will be starting on my sixth chemo, and um, I don't know how much more he has. I, if I remember right, I think he said he had something like nine or ten. They've all lasted about seven months before the markers go up, and I have to start all over. Um, one of the chemo um, didn't work at all, so I lost that one. So I still run the risk of something not working. Um, so in the meantime, when I was diagnosed three and a half years ago, my Joey had just turned 18. So woohoo! now he gets to do what he wants. He's free. He doesn't have to listen to mom. He was angry. He was mean. 
He hated me. He couldn't wait till I died. Um, that's all he could tell me. I don't want to be close to you, so it won't be hard when you die. So I went through this with him for three and a half years of him leaving the house, not coming home for three days, four days, five days. But I didn't worry about it. I just I had peace. It was like I'd go to bed and I'd fall asleep and I, I just really trusted in the Lord. I knew that this is God's battle now. God's taking care of him. I said, Here's, he's yours, Lord. And I put him at his feet. And I didn't worry about a thing. I just... I knew that I that there was a chance that I could get a phone call or someone knocking at my door, you know, saying that Joey's gone. But I was like, I'm okay with that. Lord, then you spared him of what would have been a rough life. So through this, the Lord has really built my faith. I mean, I just trust him in every single thing I do. Um, and so, so anyway, so now... I've been going through this, and um, and in the meantime, it's like when Joey was gone, the Lord just started blessing me like with people in my life. I mean, people were just coming out of the woodwork, you know. Lord, I want to go here. You want to do this? Let's go here. Let's go there. And, and I just started enjoying life like to the fullest, laughing and going places, and just full of joy. I mean, like joy, 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 joy. And that's just the work of the Lord. Um, so I, I just know that the Lord is faithful and he's t because of his faithfulness towards me I've learned to become faithful um, and being um, and just being his servant and just wanting to do what he wants me to do and so I just started living my life like that completely um, so you know just God, this is so hard. <laughs> um, if if I back up, maybe back to 14 years ago, um, I, I became a born-again Christian when I was like 21, and I'm 55. And, um, and I was serving the Lord, but I would backslide through the years, you know, and then I'd kind of disappear for a while. But I, that whole time, I loved the Lord, but I just... You know, I wasn't being as obedient as I should have been. and um, But through that process, when I would do something wrong, he would convict me. He'd give me a little rope and say, okay, go on, Lord, go on. And I'd go, okay, and then he'd yank me in, and then I'd learn from it. And, um, and so, anyway, from all of the experiences I went through in those 14 years, it helped me to become the person that I am. Um, he would just pull me in closer and closer and closer and just build me with faith. Um, and let's see. God, I think I've already passed all of this. <laughs> um, so yeah, I told you guys about the SSI disability. Oh, and during that, it was really nice because um, being on Social Security and disability was actually a blessing because I got to stay home and raise Joey. So I got to be room mom, teacher's aide. I worked in the learning center, um, very involved in his school the whole time. So it was a blessing because I love being home with children. I love being domestic. So it was a blessing to be able to stay home and raise Joey because... He definitely needed me at home, and I see what the Lord was doing that whole time. So being on SSI on a fixed income was difficult, but there was the good in it, and so I lived off of the good. Um, um, let's see. So anyway, uh, so just, um, I don't know here. So then, like I said, three and a half years ago, after being diagnosed, you know, Joey turned 18 and he became rebellious, and I had to go through all of that. Um, and I, you know, I'm okay. Um, what else? In the meantime, like I said, I just lived my life, and I trusted the Lord, and he spoke to me clearly. I mean, he would just give me vivid, clear dreams to where the next day I'm like, 
it happened. You know, it was like, whoa. It just, he spoke, speaks to me so clearly, and I feel so connected to him that sometimes I feel like a part of me is already in heaven, and it's, it's like such a good place to be. Um, uh, what else? And so, anyway, so basically, you know, a, a lot of my journey has been the hardest in the last 14 years, and the hardest, hardest have been in the last three and a half years with Joey. Um, that has been so difficult. And so, about four months ago, Joey came home one day, and um, <clears throat> I picked him up. He says, Mom, you need to pick me up. I'm like, where are you? Linda and I went and picked him up out in the desert somewhere. <laughs> and he was hot and sweaty, and he looked like he had been crying and crying and crying. So he came home, and for the last four months, God just did a complete change in my son. And now the prayers were being answered. Mm -hmm. um, the prayers of all, 20 years. So like he comes home, and for the last four months, he was a whole different son. He was cooking for me. He was cleaning for me. He would walk me. We went camping in the Sierras. He would carry me, practically carry me up the hills. I mean, it was like, you know, that's my son. <laughs> you know, like, what happened? And he stayed home. He goes, I just want to stay with you, Mom. And so about a month ago, I came home, and there was a duffel bag on the bit, on the floor and a backpack and this little manila envelope that said records. And um, I'm like, what's this for? And he's like, um, I'm taking an Amtrak tonight, Mom. I'm like, where are you going? He's like, I'm going to go into the Job Corps, finish my education, get, a tra you know, get some training, and... Um, and just stay away from all my friends. I don't want people in my life. I don't want to meet anyone. I want to just focus on my life. And then when I get it all together, then I'll think about making new friends and the right friends. And I'm like, looking at like, wow, Jesus, Lord, Lord God. And um, so I had to leave that night. So I didn't, you know, I get to take him to Amtrak. And when I got home, I had this letter from him. And this is probably the best thing that's happened to me ever. Um, Dear Mom, I, Mom, I'm very sad that I didn't get to spend more time with you like I wanted to, but I will soon. I keep crying, Mom, because I just love you so much, and I don't want anything to happen to you. I don't want you lonely either. So maybe I'll stay here and just say bleep and go to school closer to you. Mom, this is so hard I can't stop crying because you're my Wanda. And he calls me Wanda because my girlfriend and I used to call each other Shaniqua and Shawanda when he was a little boy. So he started calling me Wanda. So I'm his Wanda. So, <laughs> um, thank you for never giving up on me. Um, and I will prove to you that you did a great job in raising me. I pinky promise you this. You might have not been rich, but you always wanted the best for me and never let me down. And I love you, and I know you love me more. And then he drew a picture of Jesus and a cross and all kinds of stuff like that. And so when I saw that letter, even reading it now, but I cried before I got here, so I don't know why. <laughs> so that letter was, I mean, that's another way of the Lord just reassuring me. And he does things like this for me, I mean, almost on a daily basis. It's just kind of like, wow. So sometimes I think, oh, he's, he's, being faithful and he's doing everything he promised and so that when that time comes if I do if he does take me he answered all my prayers every single prayer was answered and during the whole period I had peace with it and I had faith um, so most importantly what I've, I guess I've learned during this journey is just to keep my eyes focused on him and um, just eat, breathe, and sleep Jesus, you know, just always, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Um, and I think that because of that, you know, I felt his great mercy and, and, you know, his grace and mercy upon me, blessing me with the gift of faith. I mean, my faith is so strong. Um, he's blessed me with peace. He's blessed me with love, joy, and lots of laughter. I mean, I... <laughs> I can laugh all the time, and I'll just sit and watch TV and laugh, laugh, laugh until 1 o'clock in the morning, and I know that that's from the Lord because I love to laugh. Um, 
So basically, like it says, I guess, in Proverbs um, 3, 5, 6, to trust in the Lord with all your heart. And I think that that's what I've been doing. And I think if we do that, that's when we get our peace and our joy and our laughter. And just to lean out of my own understanding. And I don't ever think about when the chemotherapies run out and I go on hospice. <clears throat> If I go on hospice, because he may decide to keep me here, and I'm going to be excited for that, so he can continue to use me. But you know, if the time comes and I go on hospice, I don't want to know all the things that could happen because it may not happen to me. So I just joined a blog, um, a support group of women that are going through breast cancer, and I I never read this kind of thing because I don't want it in my head. And I was like, well, maybe I will. And I started reading these horrible things that they're going through, and I thought. No, I just don't want to know that. I don't want to put that in my head because that may not be the Lord's plan for me. And I believe that, you know, he could take me peacefully. And I don't see why not, you know. But um, so basically um, I just lean on him and I just trust him. And I don't go to bed asking questions why. I have never, I don't know why he blessed me with this to not ask questions, but I don't ask why. Um, and I just let him use me however he wants. Um, uh, so anyway, I think, um, uh, God, I didn't want to stay up here for very long. <laughs> <laughs> What's Joey doing now? And Joey now lives in Sacramento, so I'm home alone, and I never thought that I would see the day that I'm lonely. I never thought that I was like, yeah, you know, I can't wait till everybody's gone and it's just me. But now I find myself sitting on the recliner like an old lady with my TV tray, <laughs> looking forward to, you know, Family Feud, and then Two and a Half Men and Jeopardy and all those shows, and I'm sitting there eating, and I'm just, <laughs> I feel like an old lady, you know. It's like I never thought I would do something like that, but that's what I'm doing. But in the meantime, I keep myself busy and I. I enjoy going and being with friends, and the Lord has blessed me with so much energy, so much energy. I have not had any side effects to any of the chemos except for the neuropathy, um, and I don't like to know what the next treatment's going to be like. I just kind of like, I don't want to know and put it in my head, you know. I just say, no, I don't want to know. Just And my doctor does tell me, just trust me, don't worry. Just enjoy your life, don't worry. So I enjoy my life. I eat whatever I want. I'll, I ate a box of vanilla wafers in a weekend. Um, and I don't feel guilty. I don't feel bad. I mean, if I want to eat a big steak, I'll eat a big steak. If, you know, to where my whole life I always watched what I ate. And, you know, I tried to live that little healthy life. I was pretty good about it. Um, so basically, at night, I just I go to bed. And um, I lay my head down on my pillow, and I just have great peace. I, I have great peace. I'm really, I'm excited to see how much more he's going to use me. And if I get to go home, I'm really excited about that, too. I get really excited about going home. Um, so basically, this is it. Um, I probably could have gone on and on, but we would have been here all night about my life, because my life has been a very difficult one, extremely difficult. Um, but through the whole thing, he taught me something all the way. And basically, that was faith. And, and it used to be really hard for me to try to tell people, just have faith. You know, my aunt would say, oh, he's never going to change. That son of mine's never going to change. I'm like, why are you talking like that? You know, you're just claiming it. So basically, my gift has been the gift of faith and peace, joy, and laughter through this whole thing. Real, real joy. Um, at a great church and just great friends and family. And it's just been really, really nice. So... You know, when I think about laying there in bed and that time comes, I'm just like, yeah, all right, <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> so, and if not, then like I said, I'm excited. Anyway, so that's about it. I hope I didn't bore you. <laughs> <laughs>